best scientific ways to avoid illness this winter season. I got you seven ways. Let's dive into it. Number seven, cleanliness is huge. You don't wanna overdo this because there's a lot of research that shows you do need to get exposed to some germs to fight it off, but there is something to be said. Daily showering, a bath. I like to do some Epsom salt, maybe add in some baking soda for some detoxification. Fresh sheets, maybe you need to wash those a little more often. Towels, drinking, eating, utensils uh, that you're using. Make sure you're just putting them through either the dishwasher or hot water to just cleanliness in regard, wash your fruit, wash your vegetables. And I like to use things like silver serum. If you need a natural antibiotic, I'll put the link to it in the description. There's a natural way to fend some of these things off. Putting chemicals and wiping everything down and sanitizing, over sanitizing everything has its negative effects because there's a lot of chemicals involved. But we do need to stay clean. I think it's a good reminder. Let's go to number six. Number six is vitamin C based food. A 2006 study from the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition shows that it will help bolster your immune system and ward off colds and flus, especially in those that are stressed. Why is it when you're stressed? Your adrenal glands house 80 to 90% of the vitamin C that you need. And each day it's depleted because each day you stress and it's a water soluble vitamin. So that means the more stress that you have, if you are under a lot of stress, you are straining your system, one way to prevent and ward off colds and flus is get more vitamin C. High dose vitamin C supplement is one option. Uh, acerola cherry is a fantastic source of it. Blueberries, broccoli, notice I haven't even said oranges yet. Strawberries, those all have more than oranges themselves. If you are supplementing with it, be sure there are no artificial sweeteners involved. A lot of the over-the-counter common vitamin C capsules or powder have a lot of ACE-K or uh, NutraSweet involved with them. These are very toxic and you're making your immune system worse. Foods are the best sources. Otherwise, I would be looking at high dose vitamin C in a supplemental form, very important. Number five, let's go back to stress. Let's eliminate the cause of why it's depleting a lot of that vitamin C, cortisol. Cortisol helps the body fight inflammation and disease. But when there's a constant release of this hormone in people that are chronically stressed, it lessens your overall immune effectiveness and the effectiveness to fight off inflammation and disease. So way too much of this thing is bad, some of it is good. So it can result in a lot of inflammation, arthritic type diseases, and effectively in a depleted immune system. My favorite coping mechanism for the stresses is breathing. In one minute a day, you could take a breathing cigarette break, right? Mimic smoking a cigarette, don't actually smoke it. And it will have an incredible effect on your heart rate variability, your heart rate, getting the cortisol down in your system. Just five second deep breath in, five second deep breath out. Do it for a minute or two, multiple times a day. Incredible against fighting off stress. If during that time you can focus your brain on something that makes you smile, it has a profound impact. Oh, the small things. Get to bed earlier as well is gonna help quite a bit. Next up, number four, avoid alcohol. New research shows that drinking alcohol can damage the body's dendritic cells. Now these are a vital part of the immune system. An increase in alcohol consumption over a period of time can actually increase a person's exposure to bacteria and to viruses because you're damaging these dendritic cells. So a study in the Journal of Clinical and Vaccine Immunology compared the dendritic cells and the immune system cell responses in alcohol-fed mice to those that have not been supplied alcohol and alcohol suppressed the immunity in the mice to varying degrees, proving that if you are regularly drinking alcohol, you are setting yourself up for the winter cold and flu time. So cut alcohol out, go to non-alcoholic versions of like sparkling water if you need something else to drink, lemon in your water, cucumber in your water, maybe do uh, you know different forms of coffee if it's earlier in the day or smoothies later in the day. Teas are an excellent source if you just need something else to sip on. Even kombucha or fermented drinks, way better option 
than sipping on alcohol. Number three, let's go back to sleep. Healthy adult participants who slept a minimum of eight hours, maybe you don't have that opportunity, over a two week period of time showed a greater resistance to viruses. Rest. So what your body makes you do once you get a cold or flu or a virus, right? So those that slept seven hours or less each night were about 3% more likely to develop a viral infection after an exposure. So one reason that this is happening is because the body releases cytokines during extended periods of sleep. The ones that you heard about with the virus of a cytokine storm, it creates that response in the body because your body's trying to fight. Well, every night you produce these to fight off what you came in contact with that day, which on a daily basis, you're coming in contact with just over a thousand viral particles. So cytokines are a type of protein and they help the body fight off infections that regulate the immune system. So you need those cytokines. Best way to get them, get some more rest. I have videos on the channel of hacks for better sleep. Check those out if you're having issues with sleep or take something like my Calm supplement, which has melatonin in it and other lemon balm, other herbs that help you to rest better. I like Epsom salt baths before bed. Get the light out of your room, get the temperature turned down, get some more rest or the virus or the cold or flu will make you rest. Number two is movement and exercise. According to the study in the Journal of Neurological Clinicians, regular exercises keeps inflammation and chronic disease at bay, reduces stress and stress-related hormones like cortisol we just talked about, and it accelerates the circulation of disease-fighting white blood cells. When you are moving, you are helping push the army around the body. You're increasing that blood flow, which means white blood cells are gonna get to more areas of your body that you may have gotten exposed at. Maybe it was in the lungs, maybe it was in the nose, maybe it was in your skin, that you got exposed to a virus or a microbe, and by circulating those white blood cells, you're getting a higher probability that the army that's looking out for invaders gets moved around the perimeter more often to spot any foreign invaders and take care of them much quicker. Movement, movement, exercise, even if it feels a little counterintuitive, make sure you're getting enough rest, but get some movement in. You can do it in as little as 10 minutes a day. Number one, during the winter months to prevent cold and flus when you do not have the sun in the sky is to supplement with it. Sunshine in a bottle, vitamin D, extremely important. Multiple videos on this channel that will help break down um, why that vitamin D is so crucial. It bolsters the immune system. You have a 75% reduction in your chance of getting a virus when your vitamin D levels are high enough. I will take those odds all day long. Uh, you are two times nearly more likely to get a virus if your vitamin D levels are low. So we wanna get these up above 50. Vitamin D3 is the type you're looking for, not D2. You wanna take it with vitamin K2 because vitamin D3 can have an effect on calcium going into your blood vessels. K2 will help keep the calcium out of the blood vessels and put it in your bone. To optimize the absorption, of your vitamin D3, because it's not what you take, it's what you absorb, you can get 244% more vitamin D3 absorbed into your system if you take it with fat-soluble vitamins E, K2, and vitamin A. Also, if you add in zinc and probiotics, you'll absorb even more of it, and you need to supplement with magnesium while taking vitamin D3 so that when your body uses intakes D3, it's got to convert it to the usable form. It needs magnesium to do it. So there's several videos on this channel about that exactly. My vitamin D complex sums those all up. I put a link to that in the description. And to help fight infections, if you're already in that mode to dig further into D3 and vitamin C and things you can do, I made a fighting infection video and put it right here for you as a next step.